Hello everyone, Trevor Mancini here, and today we're going over what is a UTM. So a question came up to me, what is a UTM? Okay, so first of all, UTM stands for Unified Threat Management. Now, um, to kind of display this, <clears throat> back in the day, you'd have a hardware firewall, so FW, then attached would be your anti-spam, not necessarily in this order, but AS for anti-spam. Then you'd have an IPS, slash IDS. Then maybe you'd have a content filter or a web filter. Okay. And then possibly something, um, <clears throat> something like, uh, uh, another type of content management or internal service stuff like that so <clears throat> what they started doing was is that for small medium businesses small medium networks they came up with the box look at this just one box and inside instead of having all four of these devices we'll just call it four for argument's sake they would split the one box into four and then you have the firewall, content filter, IPS, <clears throat> and um, you know, uh, so on and so forth. So we can have web filter. So now the two models have their purpose. Uh, first of all, the big plus about UTM is uh, licensing. Um, Usually, a UTM in one license, you'll be able to confi uh, you'll be able to get all the products under one license. Uh, another thing too is that each one of these boxes needs a set another device on site in case one would fail. So that have to have two firewalls, two anti spams, two IPSs. Because if this guy fails in this line, then I've lost my network connectivity past here. Now, there are things called fail pass in some devices where if this were to blow up, the data will pass through it, but that's very rare. So I'd have to get two, and along with two would usually come not only um, double the cost of the hardware, double the cost of the licensing. Uh, sometimes some companies will have hot spares, but now it's not, it still requires human intervention to come in and replace these devices. Now, if you come to this, the UTM one box, I can buy just two boxes, and then with these boxes, run my routing protocols between each other, um, or have, have my network set up so I have one UTM, UTM one, UTM two, and then my redundant stack switches, okay, stuff like that. Or however you want to configure your redundancy. Now, the pros and cons of each are this. With UTM, you have so much crammed into one box that the performance is generally not um, not at par yet with a dedicated device. So a dedicated firewall, uh, dedicated anti-spam. Um, they typically, uh, hardware-wise, do better so they can scale more with larger networks. That's one con. Another con is uh, more real estate. Now, if you're paying for a data center, if you're paying for um, a rack, okay, you take up four devices or eight devices, let's say, because you're having to double up on everything for a fully redundant network, that's more spaces in your rack versus two UTMs just takes up two spaces in your rack. Um, <clears throat> another thing too is that uh, with with both of them, the features are the features of each. Uh, a fully dedicated firewall, because it's meant for a firewall, usually might have a more richer 
um, ex you might get a more richer feature set, more richer experience than just a UTM. Uh, and uh, but aside from aside from some minor some minor details like that, pretty much it's the same. That's and that's what a UTM box really does. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend it on huge networks as a UTM, um, only because um, there are certain limitations, right? For instance, a firewall might have, you know, let's say this is an ASA, okay? Now, one thing that you also got to do when you're while you're planning your security is you got to you got to speak with your networking engineers to figure out. Okay, are you dropping off a 500 meg internet pipe? Because I need to know, because this firewall, <clears throat> even if this firewall, let's say, let me, uh, let me just clear this. Actually, uh, let's say that this firewall, okay, was rated for 200 megs, okay? Even if you buy a firewall with, even if you buy a firewall, with gigabit ports, so you get a firewall. You got one gig fire, uh, one gig Ethernet, one gig Ethernet. If you read the documentation for X firewall, you'll find out that the firewall has a rating, um, an actual rating for the deep packet inspection and how much you can inspect. Uh, it could even be 200 megs, 400 megs, sometimes under the one gig. So um, you'll find out that you're, you have a bottleneck um, and you're trying to figure out why. If you go and read the documentation, <laughs> you'll find out that, and that's the same with the rest of everything. Uh, for instance, uh, you can buy an IPS IDS, gigabit ports, but if you read the documentation, you know, so sometimes you'll find out that the IPS IDS can only process X amount of traffic. Now. With the UTM, unfortunately, in my experience, the the maximum it's going to try will be for every software blade. A software blade, by the way, I haven't explained that yet, is pretty much each one of these devices will be known as a software blade. The software blade is taking and taking that these used to be blades in a server rack, they're removed, and then they're software blades. So each software blade uh, usually has a one set uh, throughput, which is usually not a big deal because if your firewall, which is the first function, is stuck at 200 megs, it doesn't make sense for IPS, IDS, and stuff like that to be 400 megs because the trap is going to be bottlenecked at, at one software blade anyways. So that's one thing to consider, not only for UTMs, but in buying firewalls in general and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah. I hope this video was informative though. <clears throat> if you have any questions or comments, please do leave them in my uh, comment section below. And you can also, also visit my website, seanmancini.com. See you soon.